My brothers and sisters, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to cover the agenda, and then I'm going to have Pastor Kevin come up, pray, and uh, we'll get started. So first, what I want to do is we're going to cover the marriage merger slide, marriage merger versus adoption merger that Pastor Kevin covered last week, just to make sure for those who didn't see, hear, read, that we're going to cover it and be very clear on the differences we're talking about between marriage merger and adoption merger. We'll then review, so we had, we, the elders and the transition team with GLC had a meeting on the 14th um, to sit down and cover some of the questions that were answered at our last town hall, as well as some of the questions they had asked us as elders in a church, as well as some of the questions we asked them as a church. So I'm going to cover all of that. Um, and then if there are still questions that you guys have that we haven't answered, at the very end, we'll open it up for Q&A for those questions. And then I'll share with you the path forward as we get to the end of this. After the discussion about GLC and our adoption merger, then we're going to cover some business in the sense of we'll have John Spearman come up. He's going to share with us where we stand year-to-date finances uh, what's going on with roof loan and the church CD. Um, we got some designated categories that we want to share with you guys uh, as far as your giving and designating your giving. And then uh, I'll cover Compass School, uh, that they're, they're going to start utilizing our building for their school, I believe, the 15th of September. And then we'll close in prayer. Three o'clock, I'm thinking. All right. However long it takes, right? So, with that said, Pastor Kevin. All right, first, uh, before we pray, I just want to say thank you to everybody who is sticking around today. Uh, I think it's just a wonderful testimony to uh, your care for Faith Bible Church and just wanting to make sure that together as a family we're considering all of these things, which I think are really exciting opportunities. But it's good to sit in this room together and make sure that we're all uh, on the same page. And so uh, with that, let's go to the Lord in prayer and then just a couple remarks as we keep moving here. So, Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity. And Lord God, I pray that, that you would fill us with your spirit as we um, look at the present just uh, health of our congregation and the work that you're doing here, that we would also have wisdom as it relates to making decisions about the future. Uh, decisions that would be filled with faith, trusting you and your character and your promises and um, trusting that you desire us to steward the resources you've given to us uh, for your glory and for greater fruitfulness. And so, God, give us the ability to discern these things uh, and, and um, steward this ministry in a way that makes much of Jesus and furthers the gospel here in Joliet. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so just a few things here. Uh, again, it's kind of been a morning of review. And so if you were with us last time for the last town hall, you've already seen this. But we wanted to be very clear about uh, what is being proposed here in terms of the, the merger that will uh, take place. And so if you look to the screen, um, uh, again, this was the, in the letter that we had originally sent out uh, from the elders on July 20th. Uh, and in that, we said this specifically, uh, what is, oh, oh, there we go. What is being proposed is not the merging of two churches. The elders are not interested in, in merging uh, with another church. And that was said, uh, assuming that the only type of merger that, that we were all thinking was what was referred to as a marriage merger. That's where the next slide comes in. So that's the context of that statement. And then um, a marriage merger, this is what we are not doing, is like where Exxon and Mobil came together as two separate entities and created one new one, uh, Exxon and Mobil being then Exxon Mobil. Uh, what we're proposing and the way that we'll refer to this from now on is uh, under the term adoption merger, where Faith Bible Church and Gospel Life come together to equal Faith Bible Church. And so, uh, as we've said and reiterated, uh, this won't result in any sort of staff or structural changes on uh, our part. Uh, we're simply adopting into fellowship 
those that would be coming from Gospel Life Church, and then also that would uh, involve some of their assets as well coming this way too, uh, as this all plays itself out. So um, again, we're, we're talking as we consider these things uh, under the umbrella of adoption merger, not marriage merger. So just that we're clear on all of that. Um, and as we, uh, as, we, as we go forward here to... Um, I wanted to say, uh, and we might have an opportunity to hear from him in a minute, uh, so grateful that Steve McCausland, a representative from the EFCA, uh, is with us. And so uh, as we begin to talk about this and field questions, uh, I did mention to Steve that perhaps he might be able to come and just, at least from the EFCA's perspective, speak to this as really an exciting opportunity for Faith Bible Church and just examples that he has of, of seeing uh, adoption mergers uh, of this nature or similar to it uh, be something that was fruitful and exciting for the congregation to pursue and then see that actually come uh, to, 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 be, to be a reality. So um, that's where we're headed now. So uh, I don't know if... Uh, let me pass it back over to Gary at this point. So Thank you, my brother. Okay. So the way I was going to go about this, and then my brother, Steve, if in the course of answering questions and taking questions, if there's something that you'd want to jump in for and add to, just get my attention. Uh, similar to the last time, when we opened this up for questions, um, Andy Hudson's going to have a microphone. We are recording this, so hold your question until Andy makes it to you, and you can ask your question into the microphone so it's recorded, and then we'll answer it. So, where I'm going to start first is, during the week, the elders received an email from one of our members at Faith Bible Church, and I'm going to read that email, and then I'm going to answer it, because I feel it would be benef beneficial for all of you to hear the answers, as well as the questions, uh, but I'll probably break that email up into four categories, so I'll be quiet and just read it. <clears throat> it says, guys... I wanted to share my thoughts on the merger question in writing. This is truly an unconventional request as it involves, at a minimum, acquiring and disposing of property, acquiring missionary commitments, and absorbing a multifamily group. On what specific biblical principles are we operating in evaluating this request? Is there a similar or any example of this in the scriptures? If GLC did not own property or possess assets, would they be approaching this differently? Would we be approaching this differently? The nuts and bolts questions are important, i.e., parking lot space, additional children, ministry, etc. But this question needs to be decided on the basis of principle, not on a cost-benefit analysis. It would be very easy to fall into that trap. Lastly, this proposal certainly is due patient and thorough consideration. <clears throat> Pardon me. Patient and thorough consideration, but waiting until November, three months, to give a yes or no seems to be, to me, to be unfair to GLC. It is simply not that difficult a question. So I'm going to break this, some of these answers up um, into four categories and attempt to answer them uh, from an elder perspective. So the first one is, guys, I wanted to share my thoughts on the merger question in writing. This is truly unconventional requests and it involves, at a minimum, acquiring and disposing of property, acquiring missionary commitments, and absorbing a multifamily group. So the response is, you are correct in saying this is a unique situation, or as you put it, an unconventional request. However, it isn't something that has never been done before, and unfortunately, seems to be happening more often. There are many books that offer good information on merging churches. Mergers today work best not with two struggling churches, but with one church that has, that's vital and, and going forward and having momentum, which is considered a lead church. In this case, it would be Faith Bible Church. Partnering with a joining church, GLC. Pastor Kevin had shared the four different types of mergers, and Faith Bible Church is discussing an adoption merger. With an adoption merger, more times than not, the church that is closing its doors and being adopted into fellowship 
is typically bringing some assets with them. So in this case, GLC, if this goes through on the adoption merger, um, they would be selling their church, they would be having other assets, and obviously we're still working through all of those details. But, uh, and I'll answer some of these a little bit more thoroughly as we get into the questions. So that was the first part of the answer. So then it asks, what specific biblical principles are we operating in evaluating this request? Is there a similar or any example of this in scripture? And if GLC did not own property or possess assets, would we be approaching this differently? So in the New Testament, all the churches were new and the apostles were developing all the rules and principles for the New Testament churches who were beginning and trying to work through all the different personalities, social, economic, and cultural issues that all the new churches and the congregations had together. They were needing to deal with all this from a, a never been done before perspective. So I don't feel that this is comparing apples to apples when we're trying to consider the scriptural principle of merging a church that is seeing prolonged membership decline and dwindling financial resources. I think today in biblical terms, when done correctly, church mergers can be an example of how God is doing something new among his people. Mergers can also be a way of helping existing congregations to reach new levels of unity and maturity in the fullness of Christ, Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. I think if GLC had no property or assets, they would probably just dissolve, disperse, and seek another church on their own. But since this congregation has been meeting for years and has invested so much time and resources into GLC, they do have property and assets, and they desire to see their assets and efforts to go towards furthering the kingdom of God by an adoption merger. I can truthfully say that all the elders would be continuing to pursue this adoption merger if GLC had no assets. The next question, the nuts and bolts. They're important. We need to find out those details. And it shouldn't be on a cost to benefit analysis, which if we were a Exxon Mobil merger, that would be the first foremost thing we would be thinking of is what's the benefit cost analysis. This is definitely at, at the bottom if not even considering it. So the answer, I completely agree that the nuts and bolts are important. We as elders, of Faith Bible Church need to be concerned with asking, is the adoption merger a good thing not only for GLC, but for Faith Bible Church? We need to be very sensitive and exercise wisdom and discernment on how this will also impact our Faith Bible Church family. However, GLC, Gospel Life Church, has come to us as they sense it's God's direction for them. We are spending a lot of time evaluating each other's statements of faith and determining that we are like faith churches. In a simple sense, we have, God, we have a God-given obligation to extend love and mercy to fellow believers and help them if we can. I would say from the elders' perspective, the cost-benefit analysis only enters into this if and when all those relational, practical, and how-to questions, nuts and bolts, are answered positively. This is the key reason for the town hall, for people to ask those questions, share their concerns, and hopefully they will be answered positively, and it will be evident that this is the direction we should go. And then lastly, this proposal certainly is due patient and thorough consideration, but waiting until November, three months, to give a yes or no answer seems to me unfair. Lastly, we are pretty much letting GLC set the pace. They are the ones who say there is no hurry, and the more we discuss and work on the issues in a thorough and discerning way, the better it will be for both congregations. They are saying January may be too soon for the merger. So I would say that from a, from a faith Bible church perspective, come November, if all of our questions have been answered, and we're ready to vote, which that's the plan, is for us to vote as a congregation on this adoption merger. If it's a positive yes vote to, to adopt GLC into fellowship, then basically that timing is going to rest with them. And based on that will be some answers to some of these questions that I will cover here as we continue forward. So that was pretty much the answer to the email that that brother in Christ sent us. 
And I think some more of those answers will happen as we answer the questions that you asked last week, the questions that we asked GLC, or two weeks ago, and the questions that GLC asked us. At the end of that, if there's still questions, we'll attempt to answer them, and if we can't, we will get the answers for you. So we sent some questions to, G we, the elders, sent some questions to GLC that were a combination of questions we couldn't answer from our first town hall, as well as questions we had for GLC. And that's what we discussed, one of the two question groups we discussed when we met on the 14th, uh, when the elders met with their transition team. So I'm going to answer some of those questions that were asked last week, or two weeks ago, and then I'm going to answer some of the questions that we asked as elders. I'll pause to see if there was any comments on those questions, and then I'll get into the questions, some of the questions they asked us. So, family ministry. Of the potential people coming to Faith Bible Church, how many children would be included? And will you share their ages? So basically, they said there would be 17 children. 13 children between, that would be between second and fifth grade, and four teenagers. We asked what their ministry policy and procedure was. So GLC actually put together all of their policies and procedures in this book uh, that they handed out to us at that meeting on Wednesday. Um, it's not secret. If you want to see some of these policies and procedures, each elder has their own book. But in that, they describe their children's ministry, which is very similar to our children's ministry. Um, some of the requirements for their Sunday school teachers or youth workers, so on and so forth. So in answer to that question, they basically handed us their policies and procedures. Um, what is GLC's expectation of the congregation of Faith Bible Church? So basically, when Faith Bible or uh, Gospel Life Church starts to attend, and we're going to potentially set up some pre-meetings. Meeting is, uh, it's not a town hall, but they're going to come and worship together. We're working through some of these issues. But the question was, what are their expectations from Faith Bible Church, from our congregation, right? And I think last time, town hall, I jokingly mentioned that, you know, they would sit on this side and we would sit on... But that was a concern, right? So they basically said, you know, their expectations is to be loved and shepherded and treated just like everybody else. That's their expectation. Um, then the culture question. So you guys probably don't remember somebody standing up and asking, you think they're ready for the whiteness of our church, right? You remember that question? Yeah. All right. So we put it a little different way. <clears throat> We said, uh, Faith Bible Church welcomes and celebrates the prospect of an increasingly multi-ethnic congregation. We have a small number of people who are Asian, Latino, African American, Ukrainian, Hmong, uh, of mixed heritage, uh, but overall we're 90% white American at Faith Bible Church. Um, what is the present ethnic representation at GLC and is there any F anything FBC could do to welcome those of varying ethnic backgrounds. So they're pretty much the same makeup as us, minus the Hmong. And um, they have three or four black families, right, brother? Three or four b black families. So I, I would say overall, very, very similar to Faith Bible Church. And when we asked about, you know, what could we do to welcome them, basically they shared, don't do anything different because it'll be weird. They said, accept us as we are brothers and sisters in Christ. So it was a very, very great answer. Um, is your missions budget in the black? Yes. Um, is your missions budget combined with or separate from their general budget? So we have a missions budget and we have a general budget. Theirs is combined. So it was like faith used to be, I don't know, 10, 12, years, however many years ago before we switched. Um, what other responsibilities do deacons have in serving the congregation? Basically, same thing that our deacons do. They're, they're a serving ministry. They're somewhat different only in the sense of um, they only have one elder currently, and the rest are deacons. So sometimes in order to help out 
uh, the single elder, the deacons step up on a temporary basis, step up in the sense of maybe visiting the sick and elderly or praying for somebody. So on. Not that I feel that's anything outside of what a deacon's responsibility is, because really the only difference is the teaching part, um, the authority, authoritative teaching part. No, it's okay, nobody's looking at you or anything. <laughs> All right. So... Um, how does uh, GLC observe the Lord's table? Basically, they do the same thing we do. The only difference is, I think they recite the Apostles' Creed, right? You know, you can jump in any time if you You're think I'm doing a great yeah. job. Um, so let's see, what uh, GLC observe the Lord's table? Finances. Finances. So we asked, uh, does GLC have a mortgage or any outstanding debt? So they also gave us a copy of their financial sheet. Um, when they were in the, pro they, GLC, were in the process of making a decision on keep going, merge, shut the doors, you know, when they had all of these options hanging out there, they went and did what was called a, a modified plan. And the modified plan included them borrowing some money uh, to help their balance sheet in case they wanted to modify their uh, sanctuary, repair a bunch of stuff. So they took that loan out. It was for $115,000. Um, they have only used, I think, $3,000 of it because the decision was made not to invest any more money into the church, um, but to try and merge, do an adoption merger with another church, which happens to be Faith Bible Church. They are currently in the black on their finances. When we ask them how come they don't pay it off, they're, they're answering, correct me if I'm wrong, my brothers, their answer was, I'll try and Reader's Digest. Basically, um, they decided to do an adoption merger. They don't know for sure if this is gonna work. So they don't wanna pay the loan off and then find that the adoption merger doesn't work. And now you know, they're in a, between a rock and a hard spot because they may end up, if the adoption merger doesn't work, you know, reverting to, hey, let's put some money in the church and continue to move on. With that being said, they, they have uh, three and a half months of reserve finances, not including the money they borrowed, set that aside. If they never touch it, they did pay it off, they still have three and a half months of reserve finances. So if, you know, everybody left the church and they wanted to keep the church open, they could be able to pay bills, so on and so forth, for three and a half months. Am I correct on this? Yes. Okay, so um, they are in the black. They, they're not struggling from a financial standpoint in that sense, but they do have a, a debt balance of $110,000 that is a two or 3% interest rate. It was such a low interest rate that they felt that it wouldn't be a good, a good idea to pay it off until a decision has been made on what they needed to do. So that was the finance question. Um, when would GLC plan to put the church property up for sale? So once again, um, they don't want to find themselves selling their property. Something happens with this adoption merger, and guess what? Now they don't even have church property. So I would tell you, my brothers and sisters, when we vote in November, and if it's a positive vote, um, that will probably start a process to where now they're going to say this will be the time that we're going to stop attending GLC and start attending Faith Bible Church and when that happens is probably when they'll put that building up for sale. We do have, we are obtaining a lawyer from the uh, EFCA. Uh, I know there was a question about who's going to have to pay for that lawyer and we will have to pay for the lawyer. We don't know how much that fee is. Um, we are still getting together with the lawyer. Tom, I think, is going to try and set up that meeting and uh, and we'll move forward. But that lawyer is going to help us define a little bit of the nuts and bolts that we have to do on when to sell the property, who's going to pay for the bills if the property doesn't sell for you know, a long time, so on and so forth. So those were some of the questions that we worked through that were from our perspective. And then they had a few questions from their perspective. But before I get into their questions, any comments on what I covered so far?
Hold on, my brother, I'm going to go to Christine. And, okay. Um, just a quick question. From the time that we've been here, you mentioned that G, uh, Gospel Life has one elder and deacons. Would we just observe them into what we currently have or go through that voting process that we've seen um, happen, I think, in the fall time, voting in new people, where they, you know, whatever that might look mm -hmm, like? Mm -hmm. Great question. So currently we are asking all the current members of GLC that want to become Faith Bible Church members to go through the same process that everybody else goes through. They'll go through a uh, EFCA background. Uh, this is what EFCA is about. Um, they'll do an interview. And then if they become members, then from the time they become members, it'll be a one-year period of time before they could be nominated as either a deacon or an elder. So if if they become a member in January of 2025. They wouldn't be eligible to be nominated until January 2026. Okay? Am I right on? Excellent. Uh, Rich. Oh, okay. I was just what I'm asking as an accountant now. Is that loan the only liability they got? Boy, I sure didn't hear that. Is the loan the only liability they have? Yes. Okay. That loan is the only financial liability that they have. Yes, sir. Okay, um, and I'm not asking for names. I'm just asking for, um, is there a population within Gospel Life Church that is already said, no, we're going to go somewhere else? I cannot answer that question. Pastor Kevin or Andy, Tom, do you guys, do you um, know the answer to that? I would say uh, as, they, as they have considered their next steps, uh, I know that they voted uh, overwhelmingly to pursue the adoption merger as, you know, they've had several uh, options that they could have pursued. And so really what's happening is not that like, you know, in any way, shape or form, this isn't like Faith Bible Church swooping in and saving them by any means. They have decided uh, on their own to say, we believe the best next step for our church is to pursue an adoption merger with Faith Bible Church. And so they have had several meetings beyond where even you know, we are in this whole process. And out of those meetings, they voted, uh, again, I think uh, Brian told me overwhelmingly to pursue uh, an adoption merger specifically with Faith. So uh, I, I don't know, they didn't tell us there were you know, X number of no votes to that. They just said overwhelmingly this was their decision. So yeah. thank you. Just to add to that, I know we had been communicating 40 to 50 people potentially coming. It's, they clarify that to say more like 50 or 60 people would be coming. So it's a little bit larger increase of number, which is good. You only get one more? No, I'm kidding. What else you got, Carol? What is our numbers here? What are our numbers population-wise? So, so I would say um, last Sunday, I didn't take account this Sunday, we had 130 that was before the kids left. I would say we're probably averaging 130 to 150 uh, that come on a Sunday, including children. So yes, if they're coming with 50 or 60 more, we're, we're gonna have a challenge to sit everybody in this seat, uh, sanctuary. Uh, I will say, I know there was a question last week about parking lot space. So I counted, there are 92 spaces, four of which are, um, Handicap. We could probably fit, squeeze in a hundred vehicles into our, the front and back lot of Faith Bible Church. So if you can average two people per vehicle, that could potentially mean we could handle 200 people coming. But once again, we'll see how that works out. I would say we can probably fit a hundred vehicles on our part on the front and back parking lots um, with that. Oh, oh. <laughs> Um, just out of curiosity, if this is something that is pursued and the numbers that you're talking, would it be a thought to expand Faith Bible, you know, the parking lot or even some of the building to be able to accommodate a larger church? Great question. So our first option, as far as when we can't fit any more people in the sanctuary, is to have an overflow into Fellowship Hall. 
uh, talking with Dave Aker, we would be able to set the fellowship hall, projection screen, nice uh, speakers, and you know, so we would be able to put, I don't know, we had 100 in there today, so you know, we would potentially be able to overflow 100 people in there. Um, and if it got to the point where both the sanctuary and the fellowship hall were overflowing, amen. And um, you know, then we could start talking about putting up a new building, new parking lots, um, but we're positively being patient to see how that works. So I will say, and I think I said this two weeks ago, the option of a two-congregation church where you meet, you know, one, con one meeting in the morning, one pe meeting in later morning, early afternoon, is not something we want to pursue right now. Uh, we feel that that ends up being literally two separate congregations. So we will try to do the one church service for as long as we can with overfull. And then if it gets to the point where we got to do two before we have a new building or something else happens, we'll revisit it next year. <laughs> Any other questions before I read? Gia? Oh, Ann in the back. I see that hand. If their building did not uh, sell within three and a half months, how would this church handle the extra finances of their utilities, their insurance, their taxes, those types of things? Great question. So we're going to ask the lawyers that same question. I will say, in talking with Pastor Brian, um, and, and I hope I'm not stepping out here, this was a suggestion on how potentially to look at this. So first off, if we get 50 to 60 people from GLC coming, we would anticipate greater giving. Um, but if it was taking a long time to sell the building, in essence, we're, we're going to, and it was $1,700 a month is what he said? I think so. 1700 um, It would be an investment. We would be paying 17 We the combined... Faith Bible Church that now has the addition, adoption, merger of GLC, you know, the 200 member church or, or congregant, um, that money would cover that 1700 extra, but when that sells, so we had said 750, that was a middle of the road guess, and, and we're trying to do a better evaluation on the asset. Yeah, 750,000, I, I assumed everybody met, knew what I meant. 750,000 was the middle of the road. Top end of that is 900,000. Bottom, bottom end of that was 600,000. So they kind of went about a $750,000. So basically, if we spent 1,700 a month for a year and then it sell, sold at 600, bottom end, we still would be way ahead of the game. But we would have to figure out, is that a financial burden that we can handle that we want to take on, and that's where we're going to ask the, the lawyers to help us out in that situation. And has one more question. And how would we protect their missionaries during that time? Are, is there a thought about earmarking some of their assets when they come to cover the cost of their missionaries as of, since right now we are not adding any missionaries? Yes, ma'am. We would definitely discuss on sharing that financial burden with GLC. And once again, a lot of this, when, when I make these statements, my brothers and sisters, we're still in the very beginning stages of working these details out. So I'm, I'm somewhat reluctant to give you an answer. And then the next time I get up, I'm like, <laughs> I, was, I was wrong. Um, so I, I say those answers with, you know, that caution because we haven't worked through those issues you know to the degree where it says yes we're going to take on those two additional missionaries at this cost now how do we cover that and those are the details we definitely need to work out um steve yeah well just a quick uh follow-up to what ann said um in the event that this adoption merger does go through and there's the extra building that doesn't sell for a while Will the insurance company that they have require us to have a, a monthly use of the building? Because they wouldn't just let the building want sit there at, vacant, right? Mm -hmm. Great question. Tom, Andy, Kevin, any? No? All of, 
wish you had that. Yeah, I should have worn my own mic this time. Um, I think that we would try to find out what it would require and then make sure that we're meeting those requirements in whatever way that we would be able to do that. But again, yeah, I don't think that we know the, you know, the specifics of that right now, but we would certainly want to fulfill all righteousness, I guess, in, you know, in that sense and, and make sure that we are caring for that potential investment asset as, as you know, we, we ought to, right? So. And to build on this, my brothers and sisters, if we don't have all the answers to these questions where we're satisfied with the direction and the path we want to go, November's going to come with no vote because we're not going to ask you to vote on something that we don't have all the answers to. So we will be diligent to get those answers before the November congregational vote. And if we don't have those answers where everybody is understanding that those uh, decisions, choices, directions, so on and so forth, then we're going to take that off the table until a different time because I don't feel it's right to ask you to vote on something we don't have the answers to. So, Rich, you got a question? Yeah. No, I, I, I can, but the people on the recording can't, so be patient. Okay, once the, the assets are in Faith Bible Church's uh, name, that is final, correct? Because, I mean, you don't want a situation where uh, four or five months down the road, they say, boy, this is a bad decision. We shouldn't have done that. We're leaving. We want our money back. Yeah, so that will be part of the reason we want to get a lawyer involved so that we cover all of those bases. No doubt about it. All right, I got a few more questions to read. All right, so just let me get through the last few of those questions, and then I'll open it up again. So these were some of the questions that GLC had for us. And I think they're very similar to what we asked them. So that's why I'm not going to cover all of them because very similar to what we asked them. So one of their questions was, how do you as an elder, so the four of us, how do you as an eldership plan to shepherd GLC into the flock of Faith Bible Church? So that was a, a pretty lengthy discussion. So I'm going to read a paragraph on the discussion that was a lengthy discussion. <clears throat> we shared that Part of being a shepherd is getting to know the sheep. As we seek to shepherd the coming congregants effectively, we will strive to build those relationships that allow us to know them more fully. Then we hope that we will be able to understand how we can most effectively feed them, lead them, and protect them as they grow in their walk with Christ. Effective shepherding is a combination of all those efforts, knowing, feeding, leading, and protecting. And they were satisfied with that answer at the end of the, the meeting. And then um, they asked the question, what would be a good reason for Faith Bible Church to no longer be associated with the FCA? So what we said was basically in a nutshell, if the FCA departs from the historical Christian orthodoxy, then we would say enough's enough and we would no longer be a partner with the FCA. Steve? I'd leave too. Okay. <laughs> Amen. And then uh, the next question was, what is your stance, what is Faith Bible Church's stance on LGBTQ plus abortion and same-sex marriage? Once again, this was a longer discussion than the paragraph I'm going to read, so I'm condensing. Short answer, we do not support these beliefs and stance in any way, and we thoroughly agree with the comments published in the EFCA's denials and affirmations document regarding these issues. So if you're sitting out there going, well, what are the EFCA's denials and uh, affirmations document? It's on the information table. All right. Um, I think everything else that they asked we covered. Didn't we, brother? Was there anything else I was going to cover? That was it? All right. All right. So, um, Tom Scott, were there any questions that I have not covered that were asked two weeks ago? Just a second. Just a second. Okay. Or do you want me to ask them? You can ask them. That would be great. I'll see if I can answer them. Um, 
first page was all answered. Um, would we consider renting out the facility? We uh, answered that before as uh, a partial answer. Uh, that would be pending lawyer advice. And, and I would once again reiterate that currently we do not desire to own a building to rent it out. But if it's taking a year or longer to sell that building, it's an asset that's sitting there doing nothing, right, Steve? And what would we try to do with that? So talking with the lawyers on that option will definitely be on the table. Okay. Uh, Wait. There, Wait. There was the question, uh, will they have their own lawyer? So currently we are going to share the same lawyer. Uh, and then will EFCA provide the lawyer and who will pay for the lawyer? So the EFCA gave us names, as you know, because you got those names and you're contacting them. Faith Bible Church would be paying the lawyer's fees. And I say Faith Bible Church, obviously, my brothers and sisters, when, if this is a, an approved merger, adoption merger, then you know, the 50 to 60 people who would be coming over from GLC would also be helping support that lawyer fee at some point. So All right, that was it. Outstanding. Okay, Andy, we got Rich with one more question, I believe. Uh, sorry. Okay, an argument against renting out that building. It now becomes an income-producing activity and could cost you your tax exemption. Yeah, good. That's something we definitely would need to consider. Obviously, we're not in this to make money, right? So if renting out that facility means now we're making money, that's probably going to... Yeah, it costs you your tax Yeah. Exactly. Any other questions? Ann? Is there plans to have a meet and greet with them? Like this fall when we have some type of family time or, you know, something again, would we invite them so that they could start getting to know us? Man, great segue. And we could get to know them. Yeah, yeah, great question. So. Um, Wednesday, next Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, we are meeting with the transition team once again. We'll share with them how this town hall went. They're going to share with us because they were meeting with their congregation also how that went. Um, we had definitely discussed having a meet and greet. Uh, it, originally it was, hey, let's set up a couple of Sundays where whoever plans on coming comes together. Then it was like, well, maybe they'll just come with a few families at a time. Uh, but the, the answer to your question is yes, we want them to start being a part of our congregation instead of all of a sudden, bang, they're here and now they got to join in. So we want them to start attending whenever they're able. Um, I, I think they're struggling somewhat with you know, supporting GLC still and coming to Faith Bible Church. So that's why instead of one massive group, we were saying let's kind of sprinkle it in over a period of time. But we do desire to have them visit and do a meet and greet. And, and as a matter of fact, the first, whatever the first uh, Sunday is that we're going to welcome them into fellowship where they become members, so to say, we want to do a reception, you know, where everybody can officially introduce themselves and greet each other and we'll have some food and, you know, always eating makes things go easier, so... Pardon me if I have uh, overlooked this before, but has their pastor already left? No. Pastor Brian is still there. He will stay there until the final decision is made on when the merger takes place. So, Because he doesn't, they, not just Pastor Brian, but the whole congregation doesn't know yet if this is a go. So he is still shepherding the flock. Any other questions? So... Um, obviously, oh, i sorry, I didn't see you right off the bat there, Rick. Thank you. The, you said there's a team for the gospel life. There's a committee. Who are they? One is the elder. Who are the so others? one is Pastor Brian. Then you have Cavante Johnson. Uh, he's the team lead, and he actually was in the process of becoming an elder, but pending on if we merge or not, that's kind of put on hold. And then they got uh, Ken Lehman, 
Chris, Chrissy Lehman, and then Ashante McGee are the names of the, the four, five, I guess, the five-person team from Gospel Life. So there's the pastor, the elder, and some lay leaders? So there is a deacon, I think, isn't, isn't Ken? Ken deacon? is, yeah. So they got Ken Lehman, who's a deacon, uh, Cavante, who is a deacon, I think, going for an elder, but like I said, that's put on hold, and then they got two ladies. Okay, then we have a committee that is just the elders. You now we have a board. Why isn't the board also included? Because I noticed the elders, the deacons, were raising their hands for questions last town hall. I'm wondering why aren't the elders and the deacons all involved? So the deacons are way involved. They're just not involved in the meeting because we don't want to overwhelm GLC team with nine, ten of us sitting there at the meeting. So the elders are sitting, taking the questions, bringing them to the deacons as we share in our meeting, and then we bring them to the congregation. We just figured they might have some questions too and add to it. Any questions that the deacons would have would get relayed to the team no matter what, yeah. for sure. Yeah, there's no, okay. no, one, no one in terms of the elders or deacons is being... Uh, withheld from this process in any way, shape, or form intentionally by any means. You know, the, the elders are entrusted with, you know, the oversight of the church in terms of doctrine, direction, and discipline. And so those are the ones who are immediately in the meeting. And like Gary said, in terms of proportions, uh, we're meeting them at the table with, you know, only one less. If their senior pastor wasn't there, it would be the same number of people on each side of the table. Okay. Thanks, Rick. Any other questions? All right, so this will be the last official, in a sense, town hall that we've scheduled. Obviously, if there's any questions that come up, don't hesitate to email, call, talk to us face-to-face. -face. If something changes, and what I mean by something changes, um, right now, based on the meeting Wednesday, and we'll communicate in an email the outcome of that meeting, I would say it's, it's moving forward to where we would have a vote once all the questions are answered, a, a vote in November business meeting to, to uh, do an adoption merger with GLC. Um, prior to that, uh, unless something, like I said, comes up, we don't plan on any additional town halls in regards to the GLC adopted merger. Um, but that doesn't mean there won't be any if something changes. So we don't want to hide anything. We don't want to make any decisions outside of you guys understanding what decisions are going to be made. And ultimately, it rests with you as the congregation on whether or not we're going to do this. So with that being said, Steve, I want to give you an opportunity to say anything if you want to say anything. Good. I didn't want you to say anything. I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm serious, brother. You got something? If not, that's fine. Do you want me to say something? Do you want to say something? Perfect. You, this is really good. Excellent. I think that's great. I mean, that's, that's really, you know, what we were hoping for is just, you know, Steve has seen these things happen before and been involved in these processes. And so to have him here vocalizing that support and affirming what we're doing, that gives me a lot of also uh, confidence and comfort in terms of the process, you know, where it is and where it's going. So I think that's good.